All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Heroes Connect Military to Manufacturing event. Whether you have joined us before or this is your very first time with us, we're thrilled to have you here for the next hour. My name is Katie Bowerman, and I'm Senior Manager with the Heroes Make America Skillbridge Training Program, as well as moderate our virtual events just like this. So today we're featuring one of our strong supporting companies and one that I'm positive you've heard of, Union Pacific. We have all seen them, and you may be thinking to yourself, Heroes Connect, Military to Manufacturing, Union Pacific, Railroad, how is how is this all connected? I bet you you are thinking that right now, but someone has to build, maintain the trains, the tracks, in addition to the, of course, the bread and butter of the logistics that come with uh, the railroad, right? So it is all connected, I promise. Manufacturing and supply chain is a diverse industry, and events like this help us understand the different sectors and segments and identify the various positions that make up the teams responsible for getting things done at these companies. So from production operations, quality assurance, maintenance, logistics, business functions, these companies Companies have it all. So not only are we here to learn more about this company, but these events are also designed to help facilitate those direct com connections with the companies, right? We want them to know about your talent as well and connect you all with them. All right, so let's keep on rolling. Before we get started, I want to go over just some ground rules for today. Uh, first off, the event is being recorded uh, just to ensure that we have a clean recording and it will be sent out as a recap email. Um, so please be sure you do stay muted throughout the event uh, just to make sure that we don't have any of that background noise. But even though we are muted, I highly encourage you to still be an active participant. As we're going through the slides and the presenters are going through the information, if you have any questions, throw it in the chat box. We'll hold Q&A to the end, but I will come back and I will um, read off those questions that you have dropped in the chat when we get to the Q&A portion. So no worries, just drop it in and we'll go through it at the end. All right, while well, you guys, um, actually let's practice. Let's practice that chat right now. So if you can pull it up, what I want you to do to help our presenters understand where you all are at, open the chat box. And what I want you to do is drop in uh, the location of where you're going to be job searching. So whatever city, state, state, region, um, if you happen to know types of positions you're looking for, go ahead and throw it in the chat. And while you're doing that, I uh, just want to briefly go over what Heroes Make America is in case you're not familiar with us, uh, because we do have a lot of folks on this call. We have students on this call, but not all the participants are our Heroes Make America students. So we are a DOD approved Skillbridge program. We're opening to we're open to transitioning service members, veterans, reservists, guardsmen, and military spouses. So we provide a variety of certification trainings, equipping our students for rewarding careers in the manufacturing and supply chain industry. You can see here our program managers and the three training pathways that we offer. So we have manufacturing operations, industrial systems, and logistics. I also have listed our upcoming class dates. Um, so we'll drop our contact information to the chat. If you're interested, you let us know. If you have any questions about heroes, just email heroes at nem.org. One last thing I do want to be sure I mention before I, I let you all learn more about Union Pacific is in addition to our Skillbridge programs, we also have virtual career fairs. So in addition to these Heroes Connects, we have virtual career fairs and in-person career fairs. So I would hate for you to miss out on upcoming opportunities on November 1st. So Friday, November 1st, we have a virtual career fair. And then if you happen to be in Georgia, um, Fort Stewart is having an in-person career fair on November 7th. Okay, so without further ado, I'm really excited for you to learn more about our featured guest. So it's my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, Ken Kuamara, Strategic Partnership at Union Pacific. So Ken, the floor is all yours. All right, thank you, Katie, appreciate it. Uh, and thank you everyone for, for joining us today. Uh, we're looking forward to telling you about all the great things that we have and, and the things that we can do. So uh, together, uh, Katie, you wanna go to the next slide? So you'll be hearing from me today. I'm going to tell you about locations and career opportunities that we have. I'm going to tell you why there's 10 reasons that you should maybe think about us and why veterans make a good fit for us. You're also going to hear from Mark Gray, who is in charge of our UP Vets. That's our employee resource group here in South Texas. You're going to get to hear about some of the, the mentoring programs that they have and some of the great things that they're doing out in our community and bringing our employees together. And then you're going to hear from Michael Logan. Uh, he is a business contact that, that is on the university campus, and we work very closely with him and the Veterans and Military Affairs uh, Office there at the University of Texas San Antonio campus. 
And then at the end, we'll open it up for some questions. We do have some recruiters on the phone that would be more than happy to answer any questions that I can't answer for you. Next slide. So we like to show this map. You know, this is 2023 locations and fast facts. Real quick, you can see our operating revenue, the route miles, how many employees we have, our annual payroll, customers and locomotives that we own. This is very important. As you can see, we operate in those 23 states west of the Mississippi. Uh, so, you know, I, I was looking at the chat and I saw some North Carolina, South Carolina, you know, don't, don't, don't shut us out yet. All right. Let us, let us talk to you and, and tell you about some of the things that we've got going over here. There's some areas that we do offer some relocation bonuses and, and, and we need people. So, you know, as you can see, we have different commodities coming out of the different areas of, of the different countries. And at the very bottom left, you see there where we own 26% of Ferromex, which go, travels into Mexico. Next slide, Katie. And so these are the three tracks that we have. We've kind of condensed it here just because of time. And just so you could see, we've got our transportation or what we like to call it, the three you know legs of our stool, right? Transportation, engineering, and mechanical. And if you can look down on the transportation down each of these columns, it tells you the different positions that are in and under those uh, departments. At the very bottom, we put the average salary. You know, it's about 80000 for the transportation engineering opportunities. You can see that, you know, we pay anywhere from 30 to $46 an hour. And then in our mechanical department, you know, you can see that, you know, we've got two different departments under there. We have our car department and our mechanical department. Right now, we have a huge need for diesel mechanics and diesel electricians uh, in some of our areas across our system. Uh, $41 an hour. And like I said, North Platte, you know, we need some folks there. We have a relocation incentive tied to that. We need people in Portland, Oregon. We need people in Hermiston. We need people in Little Rock, Arkansas, Los Angeles. So lots of opportunities. And I know I'm talking real fast. And at the end, if you have any questions, please feel free uh, to ask. Next slide, Katie. So now I want you to hear from one of my friends, actually, LV. You know, we've worked together for a long time, and I was with her in Portland, Oregon last week. Uh, she works out of Chicago. And let her tell you a little bit about uh, her background. I'm the Kish Vincent. Cool railroad name, they call me LV. Uh, the role I'm in as a track supervisor, or rules and compliance team safety trainer, I reach out and communicate with the managers and our leadership and help to keep everyone in compliance. You know, with, when it comes to safety training and rules and things like that. So that's, that's what I, 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 I'm proud to be a part of. I enjoy what I do. I enjoy connecting with people. You know, I'm happy that I can move around and, and try and reach as many employees as I can to bring in a light and bring the vision and, and try to unify it. And also to remind every employee that we're all important. Because at the end of the day, we all want to win. Stay safe together. Bottom line, safety is first and foremost our priority. I know to focus on rules, policies and procedures and, and trying to do things the right way. I don't want anything to happen on my watch. It's about working together. It's about communicating with e well with each other. It's about making sure we all go home safe to our families. Diversity is a big thing. You know, sometimes people get locked in on just a certain level of diversity. And it's not just about men or women. I mean, I represent the LGBT. The biggest thing is trying to get everyone to understand we all have that same vision. I haven't experienced, you know, a judgment zone or anything like that out here. It's like, hey, we do what we gotta do, we keep working. Uh, it's not about what you do, what I do, it's what we do together. It, it can be a challenging job, but look at the big picture. You have to be serious and honest with yourself. Do you want to do this? Because nobody's going to do it for you. When I got here, I didn't see the big picture. I just knew I wanted a good job. Not even at that point knowing it was going to be my career. Constantly growing with the company, the support has been through the roof.
We can move around, you can meet so many people, you can go to different states constantly. And it's a great job, great career, great place to retire from. Man, that's been amazing to me. So, yeah, I think it's, she's one amazing person. And, uh, you know, I had the opportunity to work with her over the last six months, and she's fantastic. So this is what we're here for today. Why Union Pacific, right? Military veterans are, are just naturally an excellent fit, you know, for several reasons. I'm going to go over 10 of those today. You know, just business side, you know, Union Pacific directly serves 26 military installations across the United States. We move product in and out and from one side of the country to the other side of the country for the for the military. Katie, next slide. So no matter what your role is, there's a, a, a place for you at Union Pacific. The skill sets and the different things that you learn, you know, are, are just a perfect fit for us. And, and not to say the military leadership is what we look for, right? We can teach you how to work on the railroad, but we need young men and women that can come in and lead you know, in their work groups. Go ahead, Kate. All right. So the first reason are your transferable skills, right? Veterans, you know, the skills that you bring are the very latest, the newest technology, right? Whether it's in the mechanical field, the transportation, you all are getting the best training in the world. And, and we like that because you bring in new ideas, you bring a different perspective. And when it comes down to problem solving and operational experience, that's what we need. We need people that can think on their feet, people that can make decisions. Veterans are the perfect fit. And you're going to hear me say that a lot throughout the presentation. So second reason is structured and disciplined environment. I mean, you're used to that. You'd be surprised as an HR person how many times we get in there. And there's people that tell you right up front they don't want to lead. They don't like the discipline. You know, it's it's just tough for them. You know, it is a structured uh, environment. It's very disciplined, like you saw in the video. It's all about safety. You know, you, if you get your feelings hurt because someone's telling you that you're being unsafe and you need to step back a little bit and take a look, you know, you know people, some people aren't used to that. Veterans are very familiar with safety protocols and very used to being, you know, each other's buddy, being taking each other's back, right? Even though sometimes it's going to rub somebody the wrong way, right? And so, you know, we mirror the, the military environment in so many different ways. And you'll see that as we go through these slides. So job stability, Union Pacific offers long-term you know, career stability. So when you look at people, like I've, I'm going on 20 years and you know, the group that I was working with last week, I, I was the one with the least experience uh, on that group, people had 21, 24, and 28 years. Once people come here, they don't leave. You know, this is an opportunity where you can grow with inside the company. And when we say that, we mean that. You know, people don't really understand. And I, I yesterday, it seems like I got this question yesterday. You know, is a railroad dying? You know, uh, you know, you know, people don't really understand supply and demand and logistics things like that. The railroad's a very critical part of the U.S. economy. If the railroad ever stops operating for 75 hours or 72 hours in a row, things will start disappearing off the shelf. You'll start having, you know, shortage of gasoline, shortage of groceries. You know, we play a huge part in keeping the economy going. So as a veteran, you know, we feel that one of the things that you should be looking for is that next lasting career and a, an ability to be able to move you know, up within that company. So please keep that in mind that we can offer those opportunities.
Another reason would be strong career development and growth opportunities. You know, formalizing training programs and leadership opportunities, that's what we do from day one. You're going to be, no matter what craft you're going in, we're going to put you through some training. You know, some of it's going to be safety. We also offer, you know, other trainings on leadership, on how to manage, you know, your time, how to communicate out there. You know, you come on and you're used to that learning environment. In in the military, you're used to having to attend training. You're used to having to come out and, you know, get the certifications or get the credentials. We'll be doing the same thing at Union Pacific and, and you fit very well. You know, the development path, we actually mirror the military, right? The way our structure is, the way our leadership structure, the way our, our training structure, you know, we took it from, from the military. So it'd be very familiar for you all. Next slide. Relocation assistance. Now we don't do a lot of that, but we do have some locations, right? Where we will help. North Platte, Nebraska is one of the areas that we do have uh, some incentives tied to it. We're looking for diesel electricians. We're looking for train crew. We're looking for, you know, other uh, opportunities that we have there to fill those positions. Uh, Union Pacific, you know, works with you. They understand that, you know, you're used to relocating. You're, un, you know, we understand that, you know, it's the military's needs, right? It's the same thing with Union Pacific. It's the company's needs. Wherever we need people, that's where we need you to go. Okay, okay. Excellent pay and benefits. Here's one of the things that really separates us from almost everybody else, right? You know, we offer competitive pay. We have, you know, in fact, we're just signing up again right now for our health uh, insurance and coverage and then our retirement benefits. <clears throat> we don't pay Social Security. We pay railroad retirement. It's a three-tiered system. You pay a little bit more than you do in Social Security. You do not lose the Social Security that you've paid up to this date. It's just now, after five years, you're vested in the railroad retirement system. It pays a little bit higher and it it's... You know, it is a little more out of your paycheck, but you don't really see it because it's being stored away. It's very solid system. You know, you it's you don't have to worry about it going away. Now, here's the other thing that makes this very impressive is if you're married or have a significant other and you've been with them for at least five years, you know, they're entitled to half, not half of what you get. But they will get a check for almost 50% of what you're getting. So if you're just from railroad retirement, not you get, you know, seven thousand dollars, they would get a, a check for thirty five thousand thirty five hundred dollars. Even though they've never worked a day in their life for the railroad, you know, it's just part of that incentive when when you're in of, of our benefits in the railroad retirement. You know, we offer programs for educational assistance. If if you want to go to school we'll pay up front. It's not one of these where you got to pay first. You know, we will pay for you. It's online. It's through the University of Nebraska. We have purchased credits and you can go. You can go all the way up to your master's and your PhD. It has not, it doesn't have to be field related, but you do have to carry or maintain a, a certain GPA, which is, I think, like a C average. Uh, the benefits package for veterans and their families, you know, like I said, we're just renewing ours. It went down a couple of hundred dollars this year. Co-pays are, are, are pretty affordable. And, you know, when you compare it to some of the others, and I know sometimes coming from the military, you have your own medical insurance and that's fine. As long as you have proof that you do, then that, that's fine. Okay. Now, next slide. Commitment to service, right? You've, veterans, you know, you've done your your duty to the country. You've served. You've made the highest sacrifice that anyone can ever make. You know, you put yourself up for us. You know, and so now it's time for us, right? We're we're very appreciative of what you do, and that's why we've always been very high in hiring veterans because we know that there's times that you know. You've had to put your family second to take care of the needs. And it's our time. And we think that America should support you all uh, in, in the right way. Also, you know, you understand what the business is. You understand when we say we're building America, 
that means something to you that you know that without us there's no electricity without us there's no food for some of these places you know that that are struggling to bring in you know fresh vegetables fresh meats <laughs> at the end of the day you go home with a fulfillment you go home feeling that you have a purpose and that's what we're about you know we don't take our slogan lightly when we say we we are building america we truly mean we're building america next slide katie so we st we support our reservists you know I, I know some people say well that's the law well we understand that but we you know are flexible we make sure that our our folks are given the opportunity to continue their service and to continue to fulfill their obligations. We protect your job during deployment deployments. You know, I myself have had a, an individual here locally in San Antonio, Texas, that was gone for two and a half years and came back and went back right to his little job. Uh, you know, we understand. Oh, it's just one of those things. We know you have some duties that you still have to fulfill. And we want you to know that we are behind you 100%. All right, Kate. So about six years ago, our company put a stake in the ground and said that we would be inclusive and diverse. By 2030, we'd be 46% diversified inside our company. We're doing a great job, you know, from our hiring to what we're doing to promote and retain, you know, our DNI programs are probably some of the best that you'll ever see. We understand that veterans bring a different perspective. We understand that you've seen other walks of lives that many people will never see. And so we would like the fact that we could bring you in and maybe share some of those experiences and some of the things that you've witnessed, some of the things that you've seen, you know, with the rest of the team at UP. Right. We feel that veterans tend to come back and be stronger leaders and, and can work better with people and understand the different walks of life. So, you know, this is another reason that veterans make a great fit for Union Pacific. You know, it's a welcoming culture and it's a supportive workplace. And you're going to hear from our ERGs and some of our partners here in a second. And they'll tell you, but veterans understand inclusivity and why a diverse workforce is important. Next, Katie. So I'm going to turn it over to Mark. Uh, Mark Gray. All right. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mark Gray. Uh, first off, thank you, Ken and Katie, for having me on, uh, on this uh, virtual heroes meeting. Uh, to start off is let me just introduce myself and where I came from. Uh, I'm a veteran myself. Uh, I served uh, in the United States Coast Guard. Uh, I was a bosun's mate. Uh, as a bosun's mate in the Coast Guard, uh, we focused a lot on the search and rescue. Uh, we did a lot of the drug interdiction, migrant interdiction. But also, we uh, I did the things like uh, chipping paint, you know, mess cooking, washing dishes, you know, the jobs most people don't want. So uh, I've experienced, you know, both sides of the military. Uh, coming to Union Pacific, uh, I was asked to take on uh, the ERG here locally in South Texas uh, called UP Vets. And uh, it's an organization that, you know, our mission statement is pretty simple with veterans. Uh, we bring you on board and we want to empower the veteran. And when I talk about empowering the veteran is, you know, as a veteran, you have a sense of duty. You know, as a veteran, you have a strong worth ethic, work ethic. Uh, as a veteran, you have a, you're a problem solver. Uh, here at Union Pacific, what I do is, uh, Ken brought it up, is I'm part of the, the transportation side. I'm actually in Houston, Texas now, and he talked about, you know, how crucial we are to the economy. Uh, I'm about to get on the train here shortly that's, uh, you know, 90 semi-trucks long, you know, so it would take 90 people to drive a semi-truck. It's going to take two of us to take it from here to San Antonio to, uh, I'm from Houston to San Antonio. So, uh, again, being a veteran, being the ERG president, it's I'm I'm on the transportation side where I'm a conductor and also an engineer. So uh, on the uh, on the web page that would be under the the train crew. That's where I applied uh, back in 2017 when I started. Uh, UP Vets also offers uh, support to veteran families. Uh, when I talk about support to veteran families, uh, we come together in time of crisis. Uh, I know locally here, 
not too long ago, we had one of our uh, brothers that was a Purple Heart recipient, war veteran, unfortunately had a, a car accident that he passed. Uh, and uh, we raised some funds uh, here locally. We raised about 6,000. Uh, another location raised about 8,000. We, we probably got about thirty to $40,000 raised and uh, gave it to his widow. He was, a, he was a, not only a Purple Heart recipient, veteran, uh, but he had, had, he had a young family. So that's the second thing that I focus on with uh, UP vets here in, 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 in South Texas. And the third thing that we work on is, uh, is community impact. And when I talk about community impact is uh, Houston, as a, matter, as a matter of fact, their, their local chapter uh, does a lot with Toys for Tots. Uh, when I talk about Toys for Tots last year, they gave about $160,000 worth of toys out to the community. Uh, in San Antonio, we're working with Toys for Tots, also with Intrepid Care. Uh, but it's it's just, as a veteran, is you have a, you, you have a sense of purpose. And when I talk about a sense of purpose, is I, I've realized being out here in the in the short time that I've been out here is being able to problem solve, you know, being able to adapt to different situations and being able to uh, follow rules and schedules. And, and like Ken said, most importantly, safety. You know, we learned that in the military, uh, going home alive at the end of the day is uh, why I've been able to be successful here. Uh, but other than that, just know uh, you come to Union Pacific, whether it's, uh, you know, South Texas, whether it be Houston, North Platte, California, uh, there, there's a lot of us out here. I'm going to talk about there's a lot of us out here. Uh, feel free to reach out to any of us. And, and, and like I said, is you're going to come to realize uh, it, it, it's, it's that brotherhood and that sisterhood that you have when you're active duty. I was away from the military a long time before I came to UP. And coming to Union Pacific, it feels like it's back like I'm in the military. You know, we have a sense of purpose. So like I said, is anything that you guys need, as far as when it comes to UP vets or Union Pacific, it, it, it's, it's a great career. I'm excited about what I do, but thank you for letting me speak to you guys. And you guys uh, look forward to working with some of you guys. Ken, you're, you're muted. Uh, thank you. As you can see, you know, this is what we give everyone. This is what we live by every day. Our vision, our purpose, our values, passion for performance, high ethical standards, and we work as a team. I think if you did not get that through this presentation this afternoon, then we didn't do a very good job. But there's not going to be one day that goes by when you're not going to hear someone talk about passion for performance or talk about you know having the high ethical standards and working as a team. Because a lot of times, it's that discretionary effort because you're you're not being supervised. You're out on the road or you're here by yourself and you're doing things. And we expect you to make the right decisions for the right reasons. So these are our values. We stick to these values. And this is why we think that you all make a fantastic fit for Union Pacific. You understand, you know, what these things mean. You've lived them. You've actually live them day in and day out in where you're coming from. And we want you to come and feel the same here when you come work for Union Pacific Railroad. Next slide. This next individual, like I said, is a business associate that we work with in one of the universities here locally in San Antonio. Uh, we work with a lot of these student chapters uh, that are veterans on campus. I'm gonna turn it over to Michael. Michael. Hello, everybody. Um, appreciate the opportunity to be seen today. Um, <clears throat> I am a, a veteran of the U.S. Marines. I was uh, an infantryman, 0351. If uh, if you know what that is, then that kind of dates me, right? Because they the, the, the Marines don't have that particular job anymore. Um, <clears throat> when I got out, I had an interesting time trying to figure out how to apply my military education benefits want to know how to use my GI Bill, but there wasn't a really um, cohesive guide on how to do that because TAPS, I don't know how much it's changed in the 20 years since I've gotten out, but at the time was not very helpful in telling you how to start on your educational journey. Um, but I, I ended up getting really frustrated and I made a promise to myself that you know every, every E1 in the military has ever said, if I ran this place, I could do it better. And then you fast forward, uh, a decade and a half, and I found myself in a in a position to influence 
uh, how this university serves its military connected population. And I can tell you folks, there is no greater accountability than to oneself. Uh, I can't run away from that promise that I made uh, sitting in the parking lot upset. So with that, I can tell you that UTSA serves uh, over 5,400 military affiliated students, including veterans, active duty, military family members, uh, and 259 veteran employees. So we are the largest in the University of Texas system when it comes to military connected population. And that kind of makes sense when you think about San Antonio being military city USA. So my mission is to be the hub for all military students providing advocacy benefits transition support with values of empathy, excellence, and collaboration. And if that sounds familiar, it's probably because Union Pacific shares those values with us, which is why we're, I think, in my opinion, uh, such excellent partners for each other. So with the focus on creating veteran-friendly culture, offering, uh, offering career stability, and building community support, through the partnership, we're able to link veterans to stable and meaningful careers with Union Pacific. And UTSA provides a pipeline of skilled veterans and family members ready for roles at Union Pacific, helping them transition through career events, mentorship, and networking. Um, so I won't take up too much of your time today talking about uh, or nerding out on, on some of the things that we do, but I can say that uh, a lot of the uh, values and the philosophy of inclusion that Union Pacific has, I think, really recognizes that veteran is a culture. Uh, because I think of a, a, a lot of places out there that are not um, savvy, look at veteran status as, as kind of a checkbox. It's a job that you used to have, so there you go, you can punch that box. But I think all of us that have been either in the military or in the orbit of the military know that um, it, it's a culture unto itself. So you may be a lot of things. You may be a different gender. You may have different ethnicities. You may have different sexual orientations. Uh, but the one thing that binds us through military service is the veteran culture that exists afterwards. And I can tell you that um, it's it's rare to see a place that really understands and um, puts that notion into practice the way that, that Union Pacific does. Uh, and for those reasons, um, uh, we're likely going to remain a, a very strong partner um, for the foreseeable future, because I can tell you that, that personally, um, it's something that I hope I see grow um, coming up, especially with the growth and folks that are um, using these kind of benefits. You know, if you do the math and you go backwards, you've got a lot of uh, children that were born to veterans post 9-11 that started reaching college age two, three, four years ago. And so, you know, now they're entering the workforce and they're they're and they're getting into school and then you've got the PACT Act. So you've got access to all these extra benefits that if you're hundred percent, your, your entire family gets access to more benefits. And so taking an inclusive approach and recognizing veteran as a culture uh, is a more important now than I think it probably has been uh, in the last 20 years. Uh, so with that, I will, I will leave you all uh, and hand it back over to Ken. Thank you, Michael. And like he said, he is one of our strongest partners. You know, you might be thinking, well, how's that that important? You know, we feel that, you know, being part of the community is is one of the things that we want to do. And this university is has a large footprint in San Antonio. And, you know, San Antonio is known as Military USA. And so we have a lot of folks that go to school there. And we just want them to know that we're here to support them, that this is an opportunity for them. And this is also a home. So we do a lot of work with Michael and his team uh, on campus, off campus, different events, different things, get our UP vets involved. Uh, and, you know, like today, asked him to come in and say a few words. And, you know, he stepped up. So these organizations are huge for us. And, and you know, the, the big picture is I want people to know that it's not just about recruiting. It's about giving back to our communities and especially to our veterans. KK. So this slide right here, it's, you know, it's how do you apply for a job? You go to up.jobs, up.jobs. It's very simple. You go in there and you can search and actually tell the system now, you know, what jobs you're interested in. And when those jobs come open, you'll get notified. 
if it's a location that you're looking for, you'll get notified, you know? And so if you don't, if you go online and you don't see the job that you're looking for, go ahead and, and fill out one of these profiles and then, you know, let us tell you when there's those openings and when those things come open. Uh, it's a very simple process, you know, for you to come in there and get in there. And we do keep tabs and you will be notified when we have a position open in the location that you picked or the, the specific job that you're looking for. Next slide. Okay. Hey. This is not just a job, it's a career. And if you're willing to do the work, it's here. You know, the money is here, the jobs are here. And I mean, it's just opened just so many opportunities for me. It's fulfilling, I, I love what I do. UP had a position for me that I was able to learn my craft, I'm able to excel in my craft, and feel that I actually have met the mark in my life. We're like we're building trains, we're getting cars together, we're lacing air hoses, we're doing stuff, but we forget that we're really transporting so much commodities. I mean, chemicals, food. That's a big value that we do for the economy and stuff. For all the females that are out there afraid of giving it a try, go ahead and do it because it's, it is possible. We say building America, like we actually building to make America better. There's so much that you can do besides being a conductor, being an engineer, building freight. I believe that anybody can do it. Even if you feel like you can't, I guarantee you that you can. I feel proud about that working here. I've had the opportunity to meet some of the most phenomenal women there is a spot for you at UP. Find yourself seeking out what it is that UP have for you to be successful in your journey. So that, that's our presentation today. Here's my name and here's my email and my phone number. And I've got a lot of my counterparts that are on the phone right now, Elizabeth and some other folks. Uh, if you have questions, we're, we're here to answer. Awesome. Thank you, Ken, for that. And thank you, Mike, for coming on and talking about your partnership. Um, and I know Mark had to head out, but um, I know he was added value to the conversation as well. So I do have several questions that are coming off from the chat. So I do want to read through some of them. Um, and we will start with uh, going back to location. So Ken, if you're okay with it, I'm going to go back to that slide. If you'll just revisit sure. again, the states and kind of just get that big picture of, um, you know, where y'all are located. Cause there's a couple questions about uh, okay. locations. All right. And if any of my counterparts, recruiters, Elizabeth, any of y'all, please feel free to jump in too. <clears throat> so the, right here, as you can see, we use the Mississippi the United States is divided into two halves, you know, so you have two major class one railroads that operate left, which is west of the Mississippi. And then you have two other railroads that operate on the right side uh, of the Mississippi. So there's four class one railroads in the United States. We have these 23 states over to the left. Does not mean that we don't transport stuff to New York or whatever, but we just do it in partnership with our other railroads that are on that side of the country. Is there a specific location that that people are looking for? We cover the Midwest, Texas, the West Coast, all the way up to Seattle, Portland. Uh, we go as far as Memphis, Louisiana, and Chicago are points where all four railroads come together and meet, and New Orleans is to, and Memphis also. Thank you, Ken, just for that reminder of all the locations, because I know there are some folks who had mentioned some East Coast uh, locations, so unfortunately, uh, not west of the, the Mississippi for their locations, but um, 
Let's see another question. And I know Elizabeth has done a phenomenal job of answering some of the questions in the chat. Um, one of them, uh, Elizabeth, I might put you on the spot if you're willing to come on just uh, to, to talk through it regarding the retirement or Ken, if you can talk a little bit more about it. So how soon can you retire from railroad and receive the retirement benefit? Is it age-based or time-based retirement? Elizabeth, do you want to take it? Yeah, so um, it's kind of a mixture. So you have to have five years of railroad service before you're eligible to retire <clears throat> or eligible to draw the benefit. Then um, depending on the year you were born, the retirement age to draw your full benefits may vary. So it could be 65 or 67 to draw the full benefits. One added perk with it, if you've started younger in your career where you've had 30 years of railroad service, you get to retire early if you choose to. At age 60, you get your full benefits. Um, but I do want to add, we have no mandatory retirement age. You're able to retire um, when you choose. As long as you're willing and able to continue working, that's fine with us. But if you're looking to retire, it could be a number of those ages. 60, 65, or 67. Thank you, Elizabeth, for, for um, spelling that all out for us, because I know some folks are probably wondering those great details, especially for uh, maybe service members who only have a few years of service under their belt. You know, they got a full lifetime career ahead of them. Um, so that's a great information to add. I do have some other questions um, about the different kind of categories, Ken, I don't know if you want to revisit this again, kind of the three legs of the stool um, and what types of positions are within each of them um, and maybe how right, we see the word logistics, but that kind of falls under a couple different within right. the transportation. Can you kind of talk through those positions again and kind of the bucket sure. areas and functional areas? Sure. So transportation is our train crew, right? That's, you think about a pilot co-pilot, right? We have an engineer and we have a conductor. But we also have people on the ground that build the trains, and that would be our switch persons and our brake persons that are on the ground, building the trains, putting cars together. If you saw in those videos, there's lots of tracks. And so you've got to build the trains so they can get pulled out and go in the right order. Uh, we have remote control operators, which is, every, you know, mostly everybody's going to get trained. This is why we don't really like people coming on property is because they see that nobody's in the locomotive but those locomotives can move we can operate them remote control. It's, it looks like a video a pack that they wear on their chest with two levers and they can move locomotives back and forth. So you, you, you're going to learn and we're going to teach and get you certified on that. The engineer is like the pilot. All they're in charge of is the power, the front, you know, they, they take care of getting from point A to point B with that that locomotive then uh our conductor is like the co-pilot the conductor is the one that gets off the train deals with our customers they're the ones that make sure that we drop off the right carts or, or that we pick up the right cars uh but they're the ones that have all the interface with the customers uh you know we can hire you you're gonna ride out of high school it's a 24 7 and that again another point why veterans make a good fit right uh you're working in all kind of weather conditions uh and it's just a varying schedule there's no place for you to come like there's no office you know you're going to be sitting at home waiting for a call to come into work just like mark mark just got called to go to work and so he was in the hotel room and now he's on his way to the yard our engineering opportunities they they build and maintain thirty two thousand plus miles of our track so that includes anything that a locomotive or a train operates on. That could be bridges. That could be some of our signals. That could be some of our crossings. There'd be a lot of different things. It's like a small, a, a large construction company, but a small, because we've got several of them spread out throughout our 23 states. <clears throat> As you can see there, there's a lot of bridges, tunnels, buildings, and crossings that that they're responsible for our track labor don't get don't get hung up on the title all right because these are heavy equipment operators these are certified electricians were welders you know 
uh, con construction, you know, pipe cutters. We have all kinds of people that fit under there. Uh, CDL drivers, truck drivers, heavy equipment drivers. All right. And then we have our bridge and building carpenters. These folks are specific to our, our bridge department. Uh, that if you've seen some of our bridges in New Orleans and, you know, they are way up there. <laughs> it takes a special person to get up there. And then our assistant signal and signal maintainers. These are the folks that work on the signals that you see at the crossings with the lights. You know, you got to have some kind of electrical background, a little bit more savvy, you know, because it, it is important. These signals have to work all the time. And so whenever you see one that gets stuck or is malfunctioning, it's not going to be like that very long because we we pay you, you try to quickly get those fixed because that could mean someone's life. And then we have our mechanical department. Like I said earlier, it's kind of two different departments under one, right? It's got our car department and it's got our locomotive shop. So if you're interested in working with power, it's our locomotive shop, right? You know, we've got our own locomotives, plus we got locomotives that other companies already own and have, and we use theirs. We also use locomotives that belong to other railroads, but you would be responsible for maintaining those locomotives and making sure that you know, they're ready to go. I mean, we don't have wreckers that can go out and pick something up that breaks down in the middle of the road. So, you know, we got, it's a long day if something breaks on the tracks. Uh, but we have from small shops, like the one here in San Antonio, it's a very small shop. They So they only do certain things like, main, you know, some maintenance, uh, maybe checks, uh, change some brake shoes, uh, but not a lot. And maybe replace some hoses. But, if we need something a little bit bigger, they'll send it to Houston. And Houston will do a little bit more of the mechanical part. And if it's bigger than that, then they'll send it to, to Dallas-Fort Worth. And Dallas is a lot bigger and they can handle uh, some of the other things. They can actually take the chassis off and, and, and work there. And if it's bigger than that, then we send them to Arkansas, you know, and there they can fix anything that we have. And we have that same line in California. We have the same thing in the Midwest that they have their own, you know, shops in, in the certain areas that they need. <clears throat> then our car department, I mean, you see our cars, you see the, the graffiti, you know, it's just too expensive to try to cover it. If it's vulgar, offensive, we're going to paint it over. But, you know, some of those are pretty good. And then most are just like a mess. So, but we, we you know, our car department is the one that takes care of most of those things. You know, you'll see a graffiti car, but you'll never see a dent in car. Uh, we will take those off. Uh, that's what our car department does. They fix, maintain handles, things that break, air hoses that break, couplings that break. You know, they're the ones that actually inspect the train, and they're the ones that can keep a train from going out. And so their job is very important. You know, you got to have a little bit of welding skills. You got to be able to work outdoors. Uh, and you've got to be able to, you know, again, be able to be uh to stand the ground if you think that something's unsafe you have to you know put it out of order and not let that train go out so lots and lots of of area of growth these two come with some apprentice uh positions so if you're not fully versed in doing one of these jobs you know we do have an apprenticeship program that we can put you through and it's a full-time job you're working side by side and you'll you'll one of those positions. And I'm sorry about my my sinus. No, you Ken, I feel like that was an amazing explanation of a lot of these positions. Um, just from you know, I feel like I learned something even about these positions. And I think a lot of our service members and veterans on the call, you know, when we see train crew, we're like, what does that mean? Conductor. Why is that different there? How is it different than an engineer? You know, because the title just doesn't tell the full story. So I think your explanation really helped with one of the, with them understanding maybe which, you know, functional area they fall into and then what types of positions they should be looking at. Because I did have some questions about welding and metalworking, but I think you um, kind of covered those types of positions and the mechanical opportunities um, and where they can maybe fit for positions. So great job. Loved it. Um, yeah, I know that was very, very helpful. Another 
question I got, in addition to all these positions that you just um, described, someone had asked about um, like leadership types of positions. And Elizabeth, if you don't mind coming back on, you know, you had talked about um, the operations management trainee, you kind of dropped that in. Can you explain what that is? Yeah, so we have um, a pretty unique training program for managers. So we like to see one year of leadership experience coming in. It also requires a bachelor's degree. Um, but if that's your goal is to move into management, um, that comes available. Uh, we usually have a class each year, just depending on, on the current need. Um, we provide typically about six months of training to get you understanding the railroad operations. Um, you learn about our unions and our agreements with the employees, how to manage a budget. It's like you get to run your little chunk of the railroad and they really work to empower you to run that as you feel is needed to be successful. So they look at, um, you're looking a lot at the employee safety, um, doing field observations to make sure they're um, working appropriately and safely. Again, managing that budget, keeping the railroad operating smoothly. Um, all the departments like Ken mentioned that the three legs on the stool for our operations we have managers within engineering, so if your background's are heavy in construction, engineering would be a good um, route to take. If you have electrical or mechanical background, um, or help managing mechanical repairs of equipment, that's helpful in our mechanical group. And then for transportation, they're pretty open with your experience. They're really looking for that leadership background, and they help get you what you need to be successful as a manager. You're also partnered with a mentor. So you have all the support you need to be successful as a manager. If you don't have the degree coming in, we do promote within. So there's many times people start maybe as a train crew employee and down the road, they want to promote into management, but they just didn't have the bachelor's degree coming in. When you're an employee trying to promote, they waive that bachelor's requirement um, and they'll utilize the skill you have hands-on to qualify you to become a manager down the road. That is wonderful, Elizabeth, because that's what I was going to ask you is if they don't have a degree, because many of our service members don't come out with degrees. And so that's wonderful to hear that on the job, internal um, into the management program is a little different. Are there specific locations for these management training yeah, I saw the question about Dallas. So they're located everywhere. When you go through training, they'll see where do we need a trainee right now and have some management support to help guide them. Uh, so you may be outside of your home location. So they do require you to be open to me. Um, they really work to try and station you close to where you live, but it just may not always be available. So really when you apply, it's to a pool of positions. And then they see where in our whole network on that slide Ken showed, do we have a need? So you may be in Colorado for your training and after training's done, they may see we need a new manager in Roseville, California. So oftentimes our managers relocate a few times in their career. Awesome. Thank you so much for explaining that. I'm sure we had some folks who were interested in that type of position. Um, just to ensure that we get this question answered, I always like to ask it, but can you share on average, like if I was to apply today, what is your typical like apply to hire timeline so they know how far in advance um, or how quickly, you know, they need to start applying to jobs? It might not be a simple answer to that question, but Ken or so Elizabeth? We, we could get, both give you so many different answers because <laughs> it depends on the job and the need, right? You know, I saw Elizabeth answer earlier, like the jobs change daily and sometimes even in the same day. And there's some areas that we can post a job and we have to take it down within eight hours because we get so many applicants for it. But ordinarily we have a process on the background. We have 45 days. Elizabeth and I have 45 days to post a job source a job, review applications, interview, test folks, and get them through there. And then they get 45 more days once they get through the hiring process to take their physical, their background, uh, their drug test, 
and get through there. So we allow, we've kind of tried to shrink it down to 35 days, uh, but we we're flexible. We, you know, and it's to their advantage to quickly do that because that second part is all up to, to the applicant. They're the ones that have to schedule their appointments. They're the ones that have to keep their appointments. And so as soon as they get completed and released, then we can put them to work. And then Elizabeth has like certain start dates that she will put out there. And whoever gets cleared is going to get that first start date. So, you know, and then in other crafts, you know, as soon as they get cleared, they're going to get they're going to get started. Or as soon as they put a training class together, they'll get started. But we try to keep it within 90 days. And then sometimes, you know, it could go a little longer if you have the needs not there. Awesome. Well, that, I appreciate that answer because, as you know, transitioning military, especially, they're projecting out their timeline because they're not quite finished with their current job <laughs> to get into the new one yet. So they need to know how long or how close, you know, to to apply to those positions. So thank you for that. Um, trying to think. There was another question in here about, you know, we've talked about relocation, right? Railroad is all over the place. you got to go out to the track for a lot of these positions. Um, someone asked, at, as you progress in the company or in the position, is permanent location negotiable? Like, do they have to keep moving or can at some point they stay same place, same region? So as you are getting asked to relocate, the company's asking you, most of the time you're being promoted, you're moving up, right? And we have people that have here in San Antonio that this is the only location they've ever been, but they've passed up, you know, opportunities, uh, maybe at one of them. Right. Uh, so, you know, you can choose, but, you know, if the company is asking you to go somewhere and to, to do something, it it's 90% of the time it's a promotion and, or a lateral that's going to get you to that next step. Uh, but yes, you, you know, you, you can always manage the system to get back. It's like talking to your detailer. You can, you can manage where you want to be, you know, it just might not work out right away, but eventually you can do that. Perfect. And then I have one last question before we close out for the day. I know someone had asked about, you know, cybersecurity, IT, someone also put about administrative, um, obviously these three uh, departments are important to keep the actual train and rail going, but what about the other business functions? Is there a hub for a lot of these are located or some of them remote? Can you talk about kind of those other business functional areas? Those are all, uh, most of them are going to be in Omaha, Nebraska. All right. You know, first of all, terrorism is our number one threat to the railroad. And so we want to make sure that like cybersecurity, any of that kind of stuff is very important to us. Those jobs are mo mainly in Omaha, Nebraska. We have our own cybersecurity department inside our IT department. Uh, we also have our dispatching, you know, it's underground in a bunker uh, to keep it safe, uh, very secured location. And all those, well, those jobs are in Omaha, Houston, uh, Texas. Uh, but the ones in Houston are, are far and few. Omaha's got the majority of those jobs. Awesome. Thank you, Ken, for that. Um, mm -hmm. Wonderful information. We've learned so much today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip back, skip to the end of the presentation. But while I do that, are there any last words of advice or anything that you would like to share with our folks before we close it out for today? Oh, you're muted, Ken. I'm sorry. I know that we went over through through everything very fast and quick, and we answered questions at the high level. You've got our contact information. Please reach out if you have specific questions or if you want to know a little bit more. You know, we want to help you make that decision. And you know what? We do appreciate your service, and we do value what you've done and where you come from. That's one thing that that I can honestly tell you. You know, we build America, and you protected America. So we're here for you. Awesome. Thank you, Ken. And thank you, Elizabeth, for bringing in some of those answers as well. Um, I learned a lot today. I hope you all learned just as much. Uh, but like Ken said, don't let that conversation end here. I dropped in Ken's contact information. Um, I've also dropped in uh, Jennifer Ball was another one who I dropped in. She's a senior recruiter on the HR team. Um, 
connect with them, ask them the questions of, you know, this is my background, what type of positions you know, are applicable to my skill set. Go on the website, look at the jobs. Um, UP is a wonderful, long standing company <laughs> that has been around forever that could be part of your next military career. Uh, so go on, explore the websites, um, go and connect with these folks on LinkedIn, um, do all the things, but don't let that end here. Like I said, uh, Join us next week. So we do these pretty much every week. Today we talk to Union Pacific. Next week we have Johnson & Johnson up on the docket to learn about medical and health care manufacturing. So next Wednesday, October 23rd at 3 p.m. But for today, that's a wrap. Y'all have a great rest of your afternoon. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.